The following program is sponsored in part by the Hockenden Chamber of Commerce. I'm Tim Kilduff and this is Business Matters. This is a program sponsored by the Hockenden Chamber of Commerce in conjunction with HCAM TV. The purpose of the program is to is really twofold. One is to focus on Hopkinton businesses and then secondly to to really get into the personality of the people uh, who are running those businesses. To spend a little time talking about what got them to the to the place in their lives where they are now running a particular business. Uh, and it has a lot, of, a, a lot of overlay, a lot of dynamic, a lot of interesting stories that ultimately fit into uh, where a person ends up in terms of their own work life. Uh, one of those people is David Hamacker, who's the managing partner of Guaranteed Better Sales. We've spent some time with you, David, already speaking uh, and talking with you about sort of a personal experience, which was fascinating. But um, in, in terms of this program, I wonder if you could just quickly summarize what we've already talked about, and then we can move on and talk about your job experiences, and then in particular, the things that make Guaranteed Better Sales unique. Okay, how to sum it up. Well, we talked about uh, how I went through um, high school and college, and uh, how I was inspired to go on the road and hitchhike uh, to the four corners of North America, uh, because I wanted to make a demonstration uh, against the media because I was taught as a journalism to, uh, major that if it bleeds, it leads the headlines. And then we talked about um, how being an English literature major, Jonathan Swift, and writing for the armchair travelers, how that had made an impact on my life, as well as uh, the heart condition that I was born with, where they told me when I was 14 that I would have to have open heart surgery at, at some point. So we went through most of the story on, on hitchhiking uh, to the four corners of uh, North America. And then I came home and went into um, working with deaf-blind children. I taught ah. deaf-blind kids how to cook. Really? Actually, that was a very interesting uh, experience. I had um, uh, one of my uh, younger brothers is profoundly mentally retarded, so I had grown up with, uh, with a, a strong understanding on what it takes to uh, support a special needs person. So when I, when I found an opportunity to be a teaching chef at Perkins School for the Blind, the home of Helen Keller, um, I, I took that up and I was there off and on for five years. Wow, wow. What about other job experiences early on? Uh, as I was cooking at uh, Perkins School for the Blind, uh, the real estate market was really heating up. And uh, after five years at Perkins, um, the pay was, uh, my take-home pay was really less than $300 a week. So I knew uh, at that point that it wasn't going to be able to make a career there. The real estate market was, uh, was heating up, uh, so I went out and got my uh, real estate license and um, worked in Boston and uh, grew from from being a sales broker to a property manager and um, then I fell into uh, the people that I'd grown up with in Situate who the uh, the father of the family actually invented the temporary housing market where he um, had uh, several dozen apartments that he, we had furnished on and we rented them out on a weekly basis and uh, that was back in the, in the late 70s. So he was able to grow that from just a couple of dozen to uh, more than 400. And I worked with them uh, off and on for, uh, for several years. And uh, now that industry is, is uh, really competitive and highly right. marginalized. Right. Education, <clears throat> field of education, sales, property management. What are the pieces? As I went through my real estate career and uh, I got married and we settled here in Hopkinton and uh, Emily was born, um, we came to the realization that I really should focus on, uh, on a, a singular career. 
I had uh, come to realize that after I was uh, working with these uh, smaller companies, these real estate companies, where I, where I had um, managed other people, but but uh, reported directly to the person uh, who owned the business, uh, I was convinced that I could do a better job with my own business. So I took the um, I took the uh, the qualities that I have around communications, my degree, right. if you will. And uh, the onset of technology, you know, in the in the uh, in the early in the mid '90s, you know, going back to 1995, you know, Windows operating system, you know, 3.0 was born, and um, I could see that the whole technology revolution was something that I would want to become and stay a part of. So uh, I created Communicon Consulting Group, which is um, a company that focused on marketing for sales and as well as technology, so leveraging the technology um, between uh, for marketing to drive new sales because every company and every industry needs to um, create sales. You know the old saying, right? Nothing, nobody works in a company until the first sale is made. Mm. So I knew that that was going to be a growth industry and then I read in trade magazines that the whole telecommuting thing was going to explode at the turn of the century, you know, the, as we turned into 2000. So I uh, saw that as an indication that that is where my focus should be. Hmm. Interesting. The, does every business need to be concerned about sales? For example, uh, retail chain, okay, pretty easy to understand that. Um, a sales company that sells a particular product. But what about smaller, smaller companies? Is this a thread that, that, uh, that really weaves it through, through every, every business that exists? Uh, it does. There's uh, two or three ways of looking at that, Tim. The first one, the old saying is, if your business is not green and growing, if you're not generating new sales, then it's brown and dying or brown and rotting. Because if you're not growing sales, if you've gotten your business, uh, your, your business to a point where you're comfortable and it's plateaued out, the only way it can go is down. And uh, that is very prevalent with a lot of the smaller family-run businesses. Um, and that's something that I've learned through my experiences with my own business is that the good news is, if you're a business owner, you can run the business however you want. You can, you can shape that personality uh, to the point where some businesses are only what my account would call a profitable hobby, where they're doing what they really like to do, and they're keeping themselves and their families and maybe a couple of other people employed, and uh, that's a good thing. But they don't want to grow. They don't want to grow to the point where they have to go public, and, uh, and that's a wonderful thing. But from my perspective and uh, from the perspective of a business owner consulting with businesses, I'm focusing now only on the, the management, the senior management that has a, a, a focus, a committed focus to uh, growing new sales. Okay, you're, you're, you're doing quote unquote business consulting. What makes guaranteed better sales unique? Let me take you back a little bit to the technology. And I created Communicon Consulting Group to marry marketing and technology. And at that point, uh, sales automation um, was, was coming out. ACT was born in, in 1989. And I was, at, um, I was at a conference with the National Speakers Association. Um, the people had told me that I was a really good speaker and that I should get involved in that. So I joined Toastmasters in 1992, and as soon as I joined them, they said, you need to look at the National Speakers Association. So I followed that. I followed that to the point where I became the, the newsletter editor and the database administrator for the National Speakers Association's local chapter uh, for three years, 95, 96, and 97. And um, I did that as a way of honing my, my, uh, my skill set, if you will. And uh, as I became a stand-up trainer, I trained on software and, um, and uh, sales development, uh, I discovered a, a nasty secret. You know, a lot of the technology dot-com boom um, got, to, got to such a fever pitch that sales directors and business owners were buying technology to grow their sales. 
and they would buy this technology off the shelf. And um, over the course of developing 300 clients, I, I came to understand that this dirty secret was the driving point where three quarters of every sales automation project was failing. <clears throat> and the reason it's failing is because technology, when you buy it off of the shelf, doesn't really or can't increase the sales for the business. It has to be customized. And it has to be wrapped around the processes that help drive the sales. Well, the dirty secret is that the businesses don't have the processes in place. So when you don't have the processes in place and there's a disconnect between the technology people and the sales management people, that's why three quarters of the sales automation projects um, were failing. And even today, it's well over 50% because they're not following that, um, that uh, course of action, if you will. Hmm. So a major part around the service offerings of guaranteed better sales is um, the ability to have 100% of your salespeople using 100% of your sales automation. And, you know, now it's alphabet soup, right? It's SFA, Salesforce okay. Automation, CRM, Customer Relationship Management, and ERP, Enterprise Resource uh, Planning. So I've guaranteed better sales is focused mainly on the Salesforce automation because um, another driver behind the failed implementations is that now your salespeople, you've, you're turning yourself by forcing them into the automation, you're forcing them to become more of an administrator and, a, uh, and a, an information gatherer instead of spending the time out in the field. So the system that I've put together based on my own client experiences with companies in different industries that have grown sales year after year after year since 2001 through the last economic downturn insurance, uh, office equipment sales, and telecom, the most highly competitive industries that they are, they've been able to, or I've cobbled the GBS, the Guaranteed Better Systems, based on their best practices. So I put that together as a, uh, as a combination of templates, and now what GBS does is we go in and customize the entire process to fit into the culture of the client company, and it works every time. Talk to, talk to me a little bit about it. it works every time. Where, where, has this, uh, where has the system been proven? Got a case study? <clears throat> uh, I have a, a few case studies. I mentioned the office equipment. There's a, uh, a local um, company that was started by two brothers, and they were fixing uh, Xerox machines. And they got it, it uh, perfected to the point where uh, they, grew, they moved into an office building, and then they had, perf they had perfected a lot of the um, maintenance, first of all, the maintenance has to be number one. You have to be a market leader in the quality of the service that you provide. And then you have to have the structure and the discipline around creating new sales development from the salespeople that, uh, that you have on, on board. So in the life cycle of, a, of a, a sales organization, there's always three different tiers, right? You have the newbies or the rookies that are either new to sales or new to the industry, new to the company, and there's always a, a, a transformational uh, a part of them uh, once they start with the company. And then you have the middle or what we call the herd, which is 60%. 60% of all sales organizations have the herd. And the herd are the people in the middle, right? The, mm -hmm. the bottom 10%, the newbies, well, they, they fall off. I mean, sales isn't for them, or the industry isn't for them, or the company right. isn't for them. They come and they go, the, la the last uh, 10%. And then you have the herd, and then you have the top echelon, which are what we call the superstars. Uh, GBS refers to them as sales savants. And sales savants, they have a natural ability to sell anything to anybody. They don't really need the structure. They, ha they understand everything that needs to be done. And um, you know, globally, they represent less than 10% of uh, all the salespeople in, in all the businesses that are out there. And when I say that, the, uh, the modifier, if you will, is that they're true hunters. The sales savants, the sales superstars, are true hunters, meaning that they can go out and identify a brand new customer and bring them into the business uh, for the first time. So I talked about the quality of the services that you provide. Once you bring them in and the quality of the services is there and you have the proactive sales management processes in place, you're going to keep them. And not only are you going to keep them, but your, your goal is to turn them into a referring partner to uh, other people that they know. There must be, uh, you, you, 
there must be a, a formula. There must be uh, keys to success here for guaranteed better sales. Is, it, is, there, is there such a thing? A lot of it is outlined on my website, getbettersales.com, guaranteedbettersales.com. Um, so there's a couple of combinations. First of all, when I study, and again, it's less than 10% of all businesses, but the ones who follow some semblance of the GBS system and they're able to grow sales year after year after year, again, regardless of the, uh, the business climate, uh, they usually uh, follow a formula of, of three, I call them the three C's. And the first one is clarity. Clarity is um, a vision of the leadership, either the ownership or the executive management of the company. Um, they are very clear in the vision on who they are, what they do, and how they do it. And a huge component of this, silly as it may sound, a huge component of this is they're very clear on what they also don't do. For instance, I talked about the office equipment. When I first started with them in 01, uh, they were doing everything. They were doing you know, copy machines. Mm -hmm. They were also doing fax machines. And then they made a, de uh, a decision in 03. They, they s could see that the industry of fax machines was going down, so they discarded that. And that helped them to focus their time and energy on what it is that they, that they do do. So not only do the salespeople no longer have to keep up with the latest technology of the new fax machines coming down the road, you don't have to train the service people to go through the different iterations as well. So clarity, what you do, who you do it for, and how you do it, including what you don't do, what you don't do. Is, is the outline, if you will, the structure okay. of clarity. The second C is cohesion. You need cohesion. You need for the team to, get, to come together. A good example of this is the 2004 Red Sox, right? They were finally able to break the curse by winning the whole thing, the world championship. And all the pundits back then and even today would say that they didn't have the best talent. They didn't have all the superstars that came together. I mean, even, you know, even they called themselves the band of idiots. But they had the cohesion. They had the leadership of Terry Francona and the supporting coaches, and they came together as a team focused on the clarity of the vision that they were going to do anything that they needed to do to win the championship, including making those, uh, making those uh, harsh trades at the, uh, at the trading deadline. So cohesion is, you know you're plugged into to clarity when not only does everybody on the outside, all of your clients and prospects, know what you do and who you do it to and how you do it, but all of the internal customers, all of the people in the company, they know what that is through clarity, but they're also committed to doing that through the cohesion part of the structure. And this is very, very, very important. What I learned through the Communicon experience is that while you have the sales organizations and you have the marketing uh, divisions in, inside the company, for many, many reasons, they don't really talk to themselves. Yeah. And, uh, and they haven't done that for a long time. Just now, we're getting to the point where it's, really, it, it's critical, well, it's always been critical that whatever the marketing people put together with and, and generate leads, that the system should be able to put them into the sales organization and the sales automation tools should be able to track that from one to the other. And um, that's been a, a great... Um, a great part of uh, growing my business has been uh, focused on that. Okay, that's two. That's uh, clarity, cohesion. What's the third? Consistency. Can, this is where a lot of companies fall down. So even when you have the clarity and the vision and the leadership, and even when you have the cohesion tied into the vision, you need the supporting processes, you need the supporting policies, you need the, so, uh, the, uh, the, the procedures that need to be into place. And uh, essential elements of those is the discipline on what businesses do do. As silly as this sounds, a lot of my customers don't have a proactive job description. They don't have a job description that clearly identifies what management is expecting of the new employee or what the employee does uh, is expected to do for the company. So what I've done is I've uh, put that as a foundation and I grow on that. Not only do you uh, not have, not only do companies not have job descriptions, but they don't have a clearly defined sales plan for every one of their salespeople. 
every single individual salesperson in every business should have their own sales plan. And when I say their own sales plan, it should be clearly articulated where they're going to generate the new sales, how much of their sales are going to be from hunting brand new business, how much is going to be farming existing business, where they're going to get the lead, how they're active, they're going to be inside the company, are they going to be active in, uh, in associations out there, they're going to be networking, because there are different sales models, right? There are the service right. industries and then there's the commodity uh, aspect of it. So the consistency is clearly defined rules, regulations, and processes that manage the expectations from both the staff or the personnel and the leadership. And when you marry these two together and you focus that on providing the utmost uh, service to the client, you have the magic formula of guaranteed better sales. Makes sense. What's the, what's the difficult part in your own uh, sales and marketing. And th th this seems like a pretty first blush, simplistic. There's a lot of detail and a lot of, you have, you, when you start to drill down, it's a little more, a little more challenging than it first appears. So what's the, what's, the challenge, what's the biggest challenge that you have in terms of taking this philosophy and concept and, uh, and getting a company interested in engaging you? Uh, the biggest challenge and the biggest problem has been it's a very long sales cycle for a company to hire and buy into the whole GBS program it uh, it takes many many months of building up trust with the relationship between uh, myself and my other service providers and the uh, the end client uh, so that's a tough one and behind that is when they do adopt or buy into the whole GBS process they're really buying into transformational change. And transformational change is a lot more than just buying a software product right. and trying to engineer it. You need to understand what's going on in the culture and you need to come up with the vision. You need to literally come up with a re refocus the clarity and then sell that or build the cohesion before you roll out the consistency process. So that, that really is uh, the biggest. So what I've done and what we're doing now is to partition or parcel out the different pieces of the service offerings and, um, and uh, offering them as a one-off. For instance, I have a, uh, a profile, an, an assessment, if you will, which is, and I used to resell assessments you know, 10 years ago, uh, but this is the most proactive, comprehensive um, assessment that there is. So we're now offering audit your salespeople uh, services, which is just a quick turnaround, very comprehensive roadmap. So instead of, instead of uh, whenever somebody sells an assessment or does an assessment on their staff, it's always they hide behind it and say, oh, okay, well, now I know all about Tim. Well, the GBS process is a very different. It's, well, gee, Tim, here are the results from your assessment, and here's a roadmap and a guidebook on how we're going to work together to leverage your no. natural talents so that you're more fulfilled and you stay around with your focus on what we need you to do and uh, the customer's best you must, you must also have to overcome, uh, help uh, potential customers overcome the fear around change. If they've been operating in a certain particular way, you're coming in and, and introducing a new process. They, there's got to be a lot of fear related to that. There is a lot of fear related to that. And then, again, you can also uh, put the, the group of people who are affected by this change into three different categories, right? You have the neutralizers or the bomb throwers, as we say, who are going to be dead set against any new program that comes into place, and they're going to do everything they can to sabotage it. And then you have the people that are going to come along, kind of like the herd in the sales organization, right? Yeah. They're going to go with the flow and see what happens. And then you have the top echelons, which are the team champions or the rah-rah. This is the best thing. This is what we've been missing. This is really going to be. Let's go, rah-rah-rah. So let's, can we, can we put what you've just talked about into an elevator speech? You know, you, you, you know people practice this, right? Let me, uh, you're in an elevator and uh, somebody asks you what you do and can you do it in 30 seconds or a minute. Can you do that? Uh, I can do that. Um, I'd like to hear it. We work with uh, business owners and sales managers who are committed to change, who want to grow their sales year after year after year based on a set of proven proactive sales management processes 
uh, that can be customized and implemented for them now. Hmm. I'd be remiss if I didn't um, get you to just reflect for a moment, just briefly on, uh, on Hopkinton. This is a Hopkinton, HCAM is a Hopkinton station focused on Hopkinton news, dedicated to it. You've been here now a number of years. Um, how do you feel about living in Hopkinton? There are a lot of great resources and a lot of really good people that are involved in the community in Hopkinton at large. And what I've come to realize over the 17 years that I've been here is that there seems to be a divide. There's a divide between the people that kind of like the herd, right? They're kind of like the yeah. people that want to always stay where Hopkinton always was. And then you have the new people who want to transform Hopkinton into what it really can be. Because as you know, it's the epicenter of New England, right? right. I mean, the location of Hopkinton is, is, is phenomenal. Well, my hope is that you'll take some of your personal experience, your business experience, the philosophy of guaranteed better sales, and in, uh, in, uh, help focus Hopkinton a little bit. Uh, introduce that concept into the into the affairs of the community because I think it'll be better off. But I appreciate a couple of things. One, you taking the time to, to be here. Two, to share the personal story because that personal story has elements that ultimately build an organization, guaranteed better sales that makes sense and can be of help. So I appreciate you taking the time to be here. You're welcome. This is uh, Business Matters, it's a Hopkinton program run out of HCAM TV, which is a terrific community resource sponsored by the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for listening. Bad people, the gang members in the neighborhood. My brother, he wouldn't be happy at all if I was to tell him I was going to drop out of school. He would not approve of that. Because then that's going to be two of us not handling our business. Me and my friends are close and we all believe in each other. I know they could graduate even if it takes them longer than the four years. We have classes together, so we study together. We help each other at our homework. Realized we messed up in the past. I failed a couple classes before, not doing as much work as I should be doing. My two best friends, they keep me working hard.